you're about to hear a delightful puzzle that, in my opinion, gives insight into the way we think about things. After I share the question, we will walk through several layers of understanding before arriving at the core of the solution. Imagine that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson discover a single tire track while walking down a path at the Priory School. Watson believes a unicycle must have created the track, but Holmes isn't so sure. The question is, can a bicycle create the track of a unicycle? By the way, both wheels of the bike must have been on the ground the entire time. That is, Holmes and Watson know for sure that the cyclist wasn't doing a wheelie. Additionally, the track in question is not a straight line, and the bike must have been moving the entire time. I encourage you to pause here and consider the question for a minute. Mathematics doesn't make a great spectator sport, and I promise that this puzzle is worth a thought. In preparation for this video, I conducted a survey with the question I just mentioned. It asks the recipients to answer yes or no, and then to explain their reasoning in a sentence or two. Upon hearing the question for the first time, it might be tempting to say that bicycles always create singular tracks. Out of the 40 people who followed the instructions in the survey, 23 said that a bicycle can indeed create the track of a unicycle. 30% of all the survey takers, and more than half of those who said yes, thought that there is no way a bike could leave more than one track. The back wheel follows wherever the front wheel goes, so it should trace out the front wheel's track. Taking your bike on a ride through a puddle and looking at the wet tracks shows the error in this reasoning. One survey taker explained why bike tracks don't always coincide by describing how difficult it is to make a sharp narrow turn on a bike without hitting a wall. The back wheel goes where the front wheel is at the moment, not where the front wheel went when it was in the place of the back wheel. To come up with a better answer, we first need to understand the mechanics of bicycle tracks. There is a beautiful puzzle on the topic that I can't leave out, especially since it is the original scene from Conan Doyle's The Priory School. This time, Holmes and Watson discover a pair of tire tracks, for example these ones. How can the detective duo determine whether the bicycle was moving left or right and which wheel created each of the tracks? I will not discuss the solution here, but please follow the link in the description to an excellent video by George Hart if you're intrigued. This puzzle will push you to think deeply about how bicycle tracks are formed and you will develop a strong foundation for approaching the unicycle question. What pattern can a bicycle create then? Not any pair of lines will pass as bike tracks. For example, they cannot diverge too far from each other since a bike has a rigid frame. More precisely, at any given time, the points of contact of the two tires in the ground are a fixed distance apart. If this was the only restriction though, nearly any unicycle track could still be created by a bicycle. By the way, 10% of the survey takers suggested riding in a circle to force the two tire tracks to coincide. However, this would actually cause the back wheel to trace a smaller ring inside of the front wheel's track. The only circle that makes the back wheel follow the path of the front wheel is a circle of infinite radius, that is, a straight line which we're trying to avoid. A more subtle property of bike tracks relates to the fact that a cyclist only controls the front tire of their bike, while the back wheel always rolls toward the front one. More precisely, the position of the front wheel relative to the back wheel determines the direction of the back wheel. Let's name the points of contact of the front and back wheels with the ground F and B respectively. From our first observation, segment FB has a fixed length, say 1. And from our second observation, segment FB must be tangent to the path of the back wheel at all times. Finally, the front wheel's track cannot have any sharp corners, since a cyclist turns the handlebar continuously while the wheels are rolling. In other words, the path of the front wheel is a differentiable curve. With so many restrictions on the pattern a bike could have created on a path, a non-straight unicycle track seems out of the question. Though the back and the front wheels turn simultaneously, the back wheel rotates further behind and by a smaller angle. How can the two tracks coincide if they react so differently to the turns of the handlebar? Intuitively, it appears like Watson is right, and the unicyclist must have traveled along the path of the Priory School. Nearly half of the survey takers agree with Watson, but Holmes investigates further. At this point, you might be guessing that a bike can leave coinciding tracks, otherwise, 
Why would I care to share this puzzle? Then you're right, together with seven of the 40 survey takers. Now, instead of repeating why the idea seems implausible, let's push our preconceptions aside and try to construct a unicycle track that could be created by a bike. For our construction, we begin with the bicycle's initial position. For our frame of reference, we add a coordinate plane so that point F falls onto the point 1, 0 and point B falls onto the origin. Since we want the two tire tracks to coincide, the trajectory of point B has to pass through 1, 0, the current position of point F. Consider the path point B follows from the origin to point 1, 0. We call this path the seed curve gamma since the entire track, however long, can be constructed from it. By the way, gamma here is a function of position with respect to time. Let's assume that B is at the origin at time 0 and at point 1, 0 at time 1. When we roll the back wheel along the seed curve, the front wheel follows a unique trajectory named the first iteration of the seed curve, or gamma 1. Earlier, we established that segment FB is always tangent to the path of point B, and the length of FB is constantly 1. Applying these rules, we can determine the location of F wherever B is on the seed curve. Simply draw a unit vector with its tail at B and tangent to the seed curve. The head of this vector will be the current location of point F, some point on gamma 1. We proceed to roll the back wheel along the first iteration, and the front wheel creates the second iteration, gamma 2. We would like to be able to continue the process indefinitely. However, most paths connecting the origin to point 1, 0 fail to produce a rideable track. Usually sharp corners that the front wheel cannot follow appear between neighboring iterations. We run into these whenever the slopes on the edges of iterations don't match each other. Here, it may be helpful to consider the only unicycle track already known to us that can be traced by a bicycle. Please welcome to the stage, a straight line. Can we create a seed curve that is not a segment but still generates a perfectly smooth path? Flatness distinguishes the edges of a segment from the edges of most other curves. Indeed, all the one-sided derivatives of a segment are equal to zero at both of its ends. If our seed curve shared this property, the front tire would return to zero after each iteration, and the regions between all neighboring iterations would be perfectly flat. Path gamma 1 would begin at 1, 0 and end at 2, 0. Path gamma 2 would begin at 2, 0 and end at 3, 0. In general, path gamma n would have its edges on points n, 0 and n plus 1, 0. And even though wild turns might be forming on the insides of these iterations, the trajectory of point B would seamlessly flow into the trajectory of point F at the flat sections in between. As it turns out, every plausible seed curve is completely flat, or has all one-sided derivatives equal to zero, at the origin and at the point 1, 0. David Finn's paper linked in the description contains a rigorous proof of this fact. Is this it then? Can we construct an infinite bicycle track from any seed curve with flat edges? Let's give it a shot. We take a unit segment and replace its center with a smooth looking bump. This time, we hit a sharp turn not on the edge, but on the inside of an iteration. Since we would like to extend the track on and on without running into corners, we must ensure that every iteration gamma n is differentiable. But gamma n is the sum of gamma n minus 1 and the unit tangent vector to gamma n minus 1. Here, we divide the velocity vector gamma n minus 1 prime by its magnitude to yield a vector with the same direction but scale to a length of 1. Notice that our equation for gamma n contains the derivative of gamma n minus 1. Therefore, since we want gamma n to be differentiable, the second derivative of gamma n minus 1 must exist at any time t between 0 and 1. Similarly, the equation for gamma n minus 1 contains the derivative of gamma n minus 2. This means that the third derivative of gamma n minus 2 exists at any time t between 0 and 1 if gamma n is differentiable. Let's repeat our reasoning all the way back to the seed curve. For gamma n to be differentiable, gamma 1 must have an nth derivative, 
and gamma must have an n plus first derivative at any time between 0 and 1. Remember that we would like to extend our track on and on and on forever, and every iteration has to turn smoothly. Therefore, all the derivatives of the C-curve must exist between 0 and 1. In other words, we want the C-curve to be infinitely differentiable. Let's sum up what we've just discovered. Any C-curve that creates a unicycle bike path is infinitely differentiable and has all derivatives equal to 0 at its ends. The question is, does there exist a non-straight curve that fits these requirements? Sorry, Dr. Watson. In his paper, David Finn presents a family of unicycle paths that could be traced by a bike. Here is my attempt to draw the first three iterations of one of them, as well as Finn's equation that describes the discovered seed curves. As you can see, the track goes more and more out of control with every next iteration. This is no coincidence. A subsequent paper by Mark Levy and Sergei Tabashnikov proves three properties of any unicycle bike path. Every iteration of such a path is longer than the previous one, has more local extremes, and more intersections with the x-axis. Check the description for a link to the paper containing proofs of these properties. Also, here are the first seven iterations of a plausible seed curve generated by Stan Wagon with Mathematica. I chose to share this puzzle with you not only because I find it particularly neat, but also because it reflects two key properties of mathematical thinking. First, the puzzle shows how the answer to a math problem usually doesn't matter nearly as much as the process behind the solution. The results of the survey demonstrate that our puzzle would not make a great test question. The people who gave the wrong answer were actually closer to the truth and had a deeper understanding of the problem than most of those who gave the right answer. The survey takers who believe that a bike cannot create a unicycle track unless it rides in a straight line had no misconceptions about the mechanics of bike tracks. And yet, our test would give a higher score to those who thought that bike tracks coincide all the time. Often, the answer to a math problem is nothing more than icing on the cake, and the unicycle question is a great example of such a problem. This puzzle illuminates another aspect, not only of mathematical thought, but of thought in general. Most concepts have multiple levels of depth to them, and we rarely know how many layers are left to unpeel. Somehow, a one-line question about bicycles requires you to travel through several levels of understanding before you discover the truth. At the same time, each level is difficult to leave since each has its own reasoning to persuade you. Perhaps this puzzle is a reminder to keep questioning your beliefs and to remember that there is likely another layer waiting to be unpeeled.